In these steaming jungles of the Pacific and the swamps of Burma during the 1940s, disease was the real enemy. Long before penicillin became widely available, soldiers, explorers and medics were forced to rely on a set of crude but honestly shockingly effective remedies. Tropical mold salves, sulfur packets and quinine powders. These weren't just makeshift treatments, they were, well, the difference between life and death in climates where infection spread faster than gunfire. Today, we look back at these field-proven medical tricks with admiration, because they reveal a forgotten world of practical ingenuity that still holds lessons for survivalists and field medics alike. when infections were deadlier than bullets. Before antibiotics became commonplace, even a small wound could turn lethal. In the jungles and tropics, constant heat, sweat and bacteria turned every scratch into a breeding ground for infection. Soldiers serving in Southeast Asia, Africa and the Pacific Islands learned quickly that medical theory from the West meant little in the humidity of the equator. They needed fast-acting local solutions that didn't require refrigeration or sterile hospitals. That's where the tropical mold salves came in, a discovery that predates penicillin but used the same principle. Indigenous healers had long used moldy plant pastes and soil-rich mixtures to draw infection out of wounds. Military medics took notice. They began cultivating certain tropical molds on bread or fruit rinds, then mixing the growth into fat or oil-based salves. Crude? Absolutely. But the results were undeniable. Soldiers noticed that these pastes stopped wound rot, reduced swelling, and saved limbs that might otherwise have been lost. It was primitive antibiotic therapy before the term even existed. The insight was profound. Nature had already provided its own antibiotics. Long before labs refined penicillin, the tropics were teaching the world how to fight bacterial infection with what was available underfoot. If the mold salves were a quiet miracle, the sulphur packets were the workhorse of jungle medicine. Sulphur, or brimstone as it was once called, had been used for centuries as a cleansing agent and disinfectant. In the tropics it became a soldier's first line of defence against fungal infections, leeches and skin conditions that could disable entire units. During World War II, sulphur powder was carried in small wax paper envelopes or cotton packets. Medics sprinkled it directly onto infected wounds or athletes' foot sores. In some cases, soldiers mixed it with animal fat or wax to make a paste that would stick even through days of marching and sweat. The sulphur worked by drying the area and creating an environment where bacteria and fungi couldn't thrive. Modern science later confirmed what these field medics already knew, that sulphur compounds inhibit the growth of bacteria and fungi. It was crude chemistry applied by necessity, and it worked astonishingly well. Even today, sulphur remains a component in skin treatments and antifungal creams. For anyone building a survival medical kit, powdered sulphur, still available in agricultural supply stores, is a nod to an age when medicine was both simple and smart. A practical modern adaptation is to mix powdered sulphur with a bit of petroleum jelly and store it in a sealed tin. This creates a stable antifungal salve perfect for field use. Hikers and campers in humid climates still swear by it for preventing foot infections, chafing and rashes. What worked in the jungles of New Guinea still works in the backwoods of modern survival. 
Of all the remedies in the tropical field kit, none was more valuable or more fiercely guarded than quinine. Extracted from the bark of the cinchona tree in South America, quinine was the only reliable defense against malaria for centuries. Before synthetic alternatives like chloroquine or mefloquine existed, quinine was issued in bitter tablets or powders. Soldiers hated the taste, but you know, they loved staying alive. Malaria could incapacitate entire regiments within just a few days. Fever, chills, delirium, and, well, death followed, if untreated. Commanders in the Pacific campaigns learned that medical logistics were just as important as ammunition. Troops were ordered to take quinine daily, often mixed with condensed milk or tea, to mask the bitterness. When supplies ran low, some units even boiled cinchona bark themselves, creating their own crude jungle tonic. Even more remarkable was how local populations use quinine creatively. In the tropics, quinine-based ointments were used to rub over joints to reduce fever, or added to compresses for cooling the body during heat stroke. This adaptability, treating illness with what's on hand, really embodied the entire philosophy of tropical survival medicine. If you've ever wondered why tonic water glows under black light, that's the quinine still in it. A reminder that one of history's greatest life-saving drugs started as bitter tree bark carried in canvas pouches. The old tropical medicine chests teach us something fundamental about self-reliance. Every one of these remedies, mold salves, sulfur and quinine, proved that simplicity and understanding of nature can outperform complicated equipment when conditions collapse. For anyone serious about field medicine or long-term survival, the first step is studying what these soldiers and medics already knew. That healing starts with materials that last, resist moisture, and don't depend on refrigeration. A waxed cloth pouch filled with natural antiseptics like sulfur herbal powders and waterproof bandages can outperform many store-bought kits when used correctly. In practical terms, you can still apply these principles today. For instance, if you're camping in humid regions, a small tin containing sulfur salve can prevent infection far better than relying solely on adhesive bandages. Likewise, carrying quinine-based tonic tablets or using natural bitter bark teas can help ward off fever-related illnesses in regions where mosquitoes thrive. And while we no longer need to grow mold on bread, the lesson remains. Even in the wild, beneficial microbes exist all around us, waiting to be used if we understand them. These early remedies remind us that innovation doesn't always come from laboratories. It often begins with necessity, observation and courage. The medics and soldiers who relied on mold, sulphur and quinine weren't experimenting for science's sake. They were surviving. They proved that resourcefulness, not technology, is the ultimate survival tool. The next time you prepare your field kit or stock your bug-out bag, think about the men who carried those small packets and jars into the jungles. They didn't have antibiotics, refrigeration or sterile hospitals, just knowledge and adaptability. Their methods still work, and in some cases they work better than the modern substitutes. If you value practical wisdom from history, the kind that actually saves lives in the field. Make sure to subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share this video with someone who respects old-school ingenuity.
These lessons aren't just stories from the past. They're survival skills worth preserving for the future.